everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin here with Rob Stretche, coming to you from the show floor at Moscone South of, of Google Cloud Next 23 from sunny, I think, sunny San Francisco. Have you been outside lately? I haven't been outside in a while, so it was sunny this morning, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. So let's, let's just say it's sunny now. We're going to have a great conversation with a couple of guests folks about one of my favorite topics, and that's sustainability. We've got Jamie Sawchuk here. Global Sustainability and Climate Leader for the Alphabet Google Alliance at Deloitte. Great to have you, Jamie. Great to be here. And Neil Geit joins us as well, Director and Global Head of New Products, Business Development and Industry Solutions, Google Maps Platform. Guys, great to have you. I'd love to have you do a little introduction to yourselves so the audience gets to know you a little bit. A little show and tell. Okay. Jamie, we'll start with you. Perfect, so Jamie Sawchuk, work at Deloitte. Um, grew up, dad was a teacher, Mom was a nurse. Taught me three simple things. Work hard, be authentic, and leave things a little better than you got them. And I think that's our, our job in terms of sustainability. How do we take the planet we have out of global scale, leave it a little bit better than what we received? That's what we're looking to do with Deloitte and Google. I love it. Neil, tell us a little bit about your backstory. Yeah, sure. So I um I studied geography uh, at university and got into the world of kind of um, computerized geography, geographic information system, which just loved how you could try to model the world in a computer and help uh, answer questions. So right from the early days, I was really interested in the application of geospatial technology and sustainability and climate change. And so uh, I spent a bunch of years in the infrastructure consulting world, uh, looking at everything from flood risk modeling to noise modeling to sustainable master planning and then joined Google, I now have the, the privilege to um, lead our new product business development team, so we're really trying to build the next big um, kind of Google Maps platform bets to enable developers and partners to build uh, amazing experiences on top of that, uh, and again, help do our, our bit to help the world be a better, better, more sustainable place. I love that. Yes. Jamie, talk a little bit about, from Deloitte's perspective, why it's partnering with Google on sustainability, how, do, how are you helping to address some of the top priorities that CXOs have? Because every time we talk about ESG and sustainability, every company has an initiative or are in the process of developing one and only want to work with companies who can help them along with that. Yep. So for us, there's a lot of companies now focusing on sustainability. What excites me, excites us about Google, Google was focused on sustainability back in 2007. Google became carbon neutral. In 2019, addressed its legacy carbon footprint, and now working to be carbon free by 2030. What we see in Google is an organization with the purpose and passion that we have for sustainability. And you think about Google's history. Started as an organization with an audacious goal to make the world's information free for everyone. Now they're taking that passion into sustainability and we're looking to take that with them. So how are we doing it? I think we're focusing in a couple areas. How do we take Deloitte's industry innovations and our insights, working with our clients around the world, and Google's amazing technology platforms, couple those two, two things together. And what we're seeing in the marketplace is, five years ago, people were talking about sustainability. Now they're thinking, oh my gosh, 2030 is not too far away. I need to take action on sustainability. So we're helping bring the solutions to market that take action on sustainability. If you're looking at sustainable finance, we have a solution for you. Looking at energy transition, we have a solution for you. If you're looking to tap into the growth market of green products, we have a solution for you, all built on Google platforms. Excellent. Neil, talk a little bit about, from the CXO perspective, why is it so crucial that they focus on sustainability? You talked about uh, different industries and it's a matter of now, the companies need to take action, but from the CXO perspective, what are some of the benefits that they can help their businesses to achieve? Yeah, certainly, so <clears throat> I think now sustainability is a top three issue with, uh, with the C-suite uh, and you know, the last two, three years, every single conversation, customer meeting I've had is involved, has touched sustainability. I think the challenge all the C-suite are facing is how they can pair you know, sustainability with economic growth. And I think back five years ago, there wasn't a lot of action because it was really difficult to pair the two. So what's changed since then? I really think that um, technology, cloud computing, geospatial technology has created this paradigm change whereby now these tools and technologies are available to help companies just 
change business models. Previously it was you know, impossible to kind of you know, run models across you know, the whole of the world to look at deforestation uh, and, and to do things at that scale. Now it's much simpler to do that. So I think, I would say the advent of that technology and obviously Google's cloud platform, uh, tools like Google Earth Engine, which is our sort of planetary uh, geospatial scale um, analytics platform, really allow companies to be able to take action. So I think it's easier now than ever before to at least just start somewhere, and that's why I think we're starting to see significant more action uh, from, from companies. Yeah, and I, I think it really comes down to being able to track things, understand where they are, and really all the numbers, because you have your scope one, two, and three, and you know, scope one and two are supposed to be the easier of the three to yep. get, get a handle on, and so how are you helping companies really understand how to take that action, it, and because I think one of the things, and we were kind of riffing on this earlier on, yep. was around supply chain, mm -hmm. and I, I think that, that, especially in scope three, becomes one of the harder ones for people to understand and really get a handle on. I know we, we personally, theCUBE, talk to a lot of the different companies that are out there. Uh, so how, does, how are you two working together around that? Well, one of the, the products that we have is a solution called Clear Carbon really focused on scope three traceability. And what we found in our research is 93% of us are looking, hey, I'd be interested in a green product, a green solution. 49% of us are very skeptical about the green claims made in the marketplace. So if you're a top tier organization wanting to take action on sustainability, you want to do it in a transparent, ethical, and truthful way. So all of a sudden, traceability into scope three becomes important. So we're working with organizations unlocking the value of low carbon food products. Okay, how do I make sure that this low carbon food product came from a farm that had regenerative agricultural practices in place? Right now, we're doing that with clear carbon. What we look to do in the future is take clear carbon, link it with Google Earth Engine to scale that up. So all of a sudden you can do that for many organizations across many different farms and fields. Yeah. Let's kind of dig into some of the areas of collaboration. You mentioned sustainable finance. That's actually yeah. not something I've heard about before. Neil, I understand that Google is introducing some new technologies to help organizations kind of mitigate climate risks. Where is sustainable finance is concerned? What can you share with us? Yeah, sure, so, um, so yeah, we announced just uh, yesterday um, three, three new environmental products, which I think are really important. So maybe just to share a few statistics um, around at least kind of two of the products, which is really important. So air quality, a recent World Health Organization study uh, kind of concluded that 99% of the world's population actually uh, live in areas that do not meet the World Health Organization standards for air quality. Uh, around 40 million Americans suffer from asthma or air quality related diseases. 67 million suffer from allergies. Um, and the estimated uh, impact on the economy, uh, according to the World Health Organization, is around $5 trillion per year. Um, so air quality is really, really important. So yesterday we, we launched uh, a suite of environment APIs which complement our maps, routes, and places. Uh, so the first of those is an air quality uh, API, which allows developers to get access to uh, air quality data uh, around 100 uh, countries around the world to really empower um, businesses and, uh, and organizations to be able to embed this in their websites, their apps and technology to provide visibility and allow consumers and businesses to make uh, more insightful decisions around air quality. Uh, we also released um, uh, the, the Pollen uh, API, which does exactly the same thing, uh, obviously, around, uh, around pollen. And also a solar API, which really aims to help um, uh, developers uh, understand the solar potential of, uh, of, obviously, different houses and infrastructure. So um, these three products we have uh, yeah, released yesterday, uh, and we're partnering very closely with you know, partners like Deloitte to really bring these solutions and get um, customers to really create innovative use cases around them. Jimmy, can you share Deloitte's investment in sustainable finance? I understand there's some pretty significant investments and maybe some examples of how that's coming to fruition? Yeah, so for me, it's building on one of the products you guys brought to market 
a number of years ago called Google Earth Engine, you mentioned it earlier. So for years, Google Earth Engine was used by climate scientists around the world to study the effects of climate change. Last year, Google made it available for our commercial clients. At the same time, regions like Europe are, are introducing new requirements. So there's a task force on nature-related financial disclosure that's going to ask financial services organizations to make disclosures on the climate and nature risks associated with their investments. You think about if you're a regional bank and you're investing in an area and all of a sudden it's hit by a drought or a wildfire or a hurricane, there could be a lot of dis exposure there. So then we have organizations like NatWest in the UK that want to get in front of this. How do you take Google Earth Engine, these emerging EU regulatory frameworks, and apply this type of technology to understand the climate and nature risks in NatWest's financial investments. And when you take it down into the agricultural sector, how do they help agricultural people understand their exposures and then their customers, the farmers? How can I get recognized for using regenerative agricultural practices? As soon as you create the transparency, then you create the value, the pathway to value for that farmer. Which I imagine can be transformative for their business. Absolutely. Yeah, in many ways. Because all of a sudden it's going to create transparency. We are going to be able to see in a couple years where and who's investing in green sustainable solutions and who's maybe not. And we're finding our financial services clients want to get on this side of the ledger and avoid that side of the ledger. What are some of the other industries where you're finding similar kind of cultural um, adaptation to going in the sustainability direction from a real action perspective? Do you want to start with yeah, that? Yeah, I would say probably, uh, certainly, I mean, transportation and logistics, uh, I yeah. mean, of course, is one, uh, given it's, uh, you know, a huge source of carbon and carbon emissions. So certainly, I mean, on, on the Google side, uh, you know, we've had our routing platforms for a while. Last year, we released uh, eco-friendly routes, which again allows consumers and developers to be able to, again, understand and make trade-offs based on which route is going to be the most uh, environmentally friendly, um, and to help try to obviously balance the, you know, the cost of that with kind of e economic growth. Um, and again, and uh, and Deloitte. Um, have, have worked with uh, Electrify to, yes. yeah, to, to build a solution on top of Google Cloud Platform and, and other APIs to again help really uh, deliver kind of vertical specific solutions. And, and for me that's really exciting. I'm a, an engineer by background and you look at transportation and energy, 40% of our global greenhouse emissions. And if you're a transportation company right now, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how do I transition to zero emission vehicles? And so we built this solution called Electrified Fleet that sits on Google Cloud, leverages Google ecosystem partner technologies in terms of sensors that would be on vehicles, and helps those clients, like Pure Later in Canada, so a national freight and logistics firm with fleets across Canada. Pure later has to reduce its scope one, scope two emissions by 42% by 2030 and to get to zero by 2050. We work with them with Electrified Fleet to help them optimize their roadmap and pathway, then help figure out how to tap into all the um, incentives that are out there right now. Right. And then use supply chain teams to help, where are you going to source all these vehicles? So that's step one. Step three is where are you going to get the energy? And that's electrified grid, also on GCP. So electrified grid helps us figure out how are we going to do the energy and energy infrastructure transition? Because we're going to have to invest trillions on this side to get the right renewable energy to the right places. Electrified grid's a digital twin that helps you do that. From a countrywide to a street block, Here's how I'm going to plug in my EV at night. And you're actually helping the customers build the applications or use the APIs? How, how does that, when you're working with clients, how does that work? We're working together to build, back to, from a Deloitte perspective, we'll bring our industry insights and Google platforms. 
and then take that to our clients and help them figure out, okay, in their context, what's the right decisions, right moves, right next step for them. Take all the complexity of grand ambition away, what's the simple next step to take in terms of moving forward on their climate agenda? Yeah, and so it's helping them almost build their own dashboard based on, Bang on. The, del the, the data and the APIs and all of the maps. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, exactly. So I think, yeah, Google really is the core kind of foundational, I would say, technology provider with Google Cloud Platform, with our Google Maps platform, yep. and then Deloitte bring you know, the consulting industry experience, but I think most importantly, it's that solution aspect of tying, again, this together and really bringing an end-to-end -end experience you know, to customers to help them be able to do things a lot quicker and a lot faster, and I think that's another reason why we're seeing much more, again, action at, at the CXO and a board level, because there's many more solutions and tools available to help companies get started more easily. Back five years ago, you had to invest so much yourself to be able to, to do yeah. that, so I think the powerful combination of those two are really helping to accelerate change. I agree. We've talked about sustainable finance, transportation, energy transition. Let's spend our final few minutes on sustainable cities and infrastructure. You talked about greenhouse gases and vehicles, but cities are a big generator, big source of greenhouse gases. What are some of the challenges that cities are facing and how can Deloitte Google help them start dialing down some of the risks and complexities? So I, I live in uh, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, a couple years ago, a city like Vancouver, we had a heat dome, 2021. All of a sudden, if normal day would be 28 Celsius, it was going up to 49 Celsius on my deck in the shade. People were literally dying from heat in the city. And when you start to look at the temperature variation, all of a sudden you find, through these Google technologies, there's huge variation between the part of the city that's covered in a green canopy and the part of the city that just has black asphalt and absorbing all that heat. So now you move forward, how do we help our cities? The other thing that cities are grappling with coming out of COVID, how do I create a city that has affordable housing? I don't know about you guys, my kids are trying to figure out where to live and it's awfully expensive. So now you move forward, Google has this technology called Delve and I describe it as a digital twin of a technology, a city, it helps you optimize for what might the future look like. How do I build affordable housing? Plus, how do I build green space in, in the communities and make the communities more livable? And how do I decarbonize these communities at the same time? Too often our, in our communities, we position it as, am I for economic growth or am I for sustainability? This allows city planners to do both and take that old analog, let's draw a map of what the future would look like. Let's run 150 scenarios to model out what the future should look like. Awesome, anything to add, Neil, before we wrap? Because I think you talked about this in the beginning about enabling economic growth and sustainability. It's now achievable. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think you very well articulately uh, yeah, put that, Jamie. I think it's, again, it's this confluence of um, these kind of you know, cloud scale computing platforms with much more real time geospatial information sensors, the combination of both of those together with generative AI to be able to model out different scenarios, bring in the financials and all this different data. It just enables you to explore hundreds, thousands, millions of different permutations and scenarios to try and make more informed decisions. And I think it's increasingly critical for cities at the master planning level, because that, that is your chance. You know, 90% of the impact will be as you're planning and designing, yeah. because obviously once you start building and construction, you're already kind of so far down the path. So how can we provide you know, these tools to enable decision makers to be able to you know, balance sustainability uh, and economic growth? And I think we've I think this year really is hitting an inflection point where now it, this is much more kind of widely available. So I think we're going to see a huge amount of change over the next two, three, you know, five years, which is yep. going to be hugely impactful for the sustainability of cities and uh, moving forward. That's exciting, the sustainability across industries. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining Rob and me on the program, talking about what Deloitte and Google are doing together from a, a sustainability perspective. What you're enabling organizations to achieve and the fact that the time is now and the opportunity is there is awesome. So we're yep. going to keep our eyes on this space. Thank you again for your time. Thank, Thank you, you for the opportunity. Our pleasure.
For our guests and for Rob Strache, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live, day one of our coverage of Google Cloud Next. Our next guest joins us in just a minute, so stick around.